Welcome back to The Modern Ham. Today I'm going to show you how to link your BBQ32 nodes over the internet with AXIP, so stay tuned. Alright, so as a last video in the BBS portion besides like a short connection video that's also going to be out, uh, I wanted to show you how to connect two different nodes together to do node-to-node -node linking uh, under LinBBQ or BBQ32. This will allow you basically in your friends to take your nodes that are, you know, across the states or across the world and at least use the AX, uh, the IP address or internet backbone to get those nodes linked together. With that said, uh, the format of all of these are, I've already done the documentation on my blog, so we're going to be following along. That's going to keep me on track and it's going to provide you guys a different medium for getting different codes and different uh, ways to copy and paste data, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to use AXIP to link BBQ32 or Lin BBQ nodes over the internet. And the first thing I start out with is port forwarding. Now, uh, this might be a foreign concept to you or it might not, but you need to know that whenever you have, uh, whenever you allow connections into uh, your network for whatever reason, in this case it's node-to-node -node linking, you have to usually open those ports on your operating system. Now, on Windows, uh, that's as simple as hitting code, or sorry, your Windows key R, and you're going to type in firewall.cpl. Once you're here, you're going to go to advanced settings, and then you're going to go to income inbound rules. You're going to right click, hit new rule. You're going to go to port, and we're going to go to next. And for the port, we're going to use 10093, and that's just the universal port that typically BBQ32 uses. And I'm going to show you Linux in just a second. We're going to allow the connection and uh, we're going to apply it to domain, public, private, whatever it be. And I'll just call this BBQ32. All right, and just to be safe on the outbound rules, I want you to do the exact same thing. Right click, new rule, and you'll go through the same process. And that's all that really encompasses port forwarding or sorry port opening on Windows operating systems now if you're on Linux and I really recommend you do run your node on Linux it's just more stable that way uh, opening your firewall can look a few different ways depending on what you have installed so if you know what you have installed you'll know if you what command you use to open your ports uh, I provided a couple of generic ones that should Work for most people if you're using Debian, Ubuntu, or uh, Raspbian. So if you're using an uh, uncomplicated firewall, UFW, it'll be sudo UFW allow 10093. And if you don't know, and it doesn't hurt to enter this command, because as you can see, you'll get that command not found. It's not a big deal, right? Now, IP tables, you'll probably definitely want to use these, because you probably have IP tables. So you can either go and copy it off the blog post or you can copy the command off the video. I don't even have IP tables, so I don't need it. But run these commands just in case. Now, uh, what I can't help you with is your router. So uh, on top of the opening ports on your operating system, you also have to forward the ports on your router. So whatever IP address locally that your node's being hosted on, you won't need that, and you'll have to go to your router settings, and you're looking for an option called port forwarding. And the port that you want to forward is going to be 10093. The type is going to be UDP, and the destination is going to be the IP address that your BBQ or LIN BBQ node is running on internally. There's a million different guides on the internet for port forwarding, so if you do need help with that, make sure to look it up. I can't show you it for every single type of router type or manufacturer. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to actually open up our BBQ32 configuration file. And if you followed my guide, you should know where this is at. Oh, this is actually blank, huh? Oh, no, there we go. So... Uh, you're going to scroll down. You're going to scroll down in your configuration file to where your port section is, and at the very last part of your last port, you're going to go on my blog post, 
and you're just going to copy and paste this section here, right? This entire block, just paste it into your configuration. And there's a couple things you're going to want to change. So the port number, uh, ideally you want this port number to be the next sequential port that you have open. So if you have, you know, VHF on one, HF on two, this will be three. So whatever one above it, if I scroll up, you guys are going to see one of my passwords. I don't want that. Whatever one above it, this add on one. Um, something else you might want to change. Let's see. This auto map. Okay. What is auto map? Because uh, I have to talk about it. Every guide on the internet wants you to use auto map. Every single linking node linking guide on the internet uses auto map. But what does auto map do? So whenever you add nodes to link to on BBQ32, by default, uh, you broadcast your node and your host to the other node. And if that other node has auto map enabled, it will automatically add routes to get back to you. And that's really convenient, really, because it means that really only one person needs to add those uh, broadcasts and links. But that means that everybody on the internet, every random stranger, every weird hacker, can, all they have to do is just add your node as a link. And then they will be able to get into your node and use your radio however they like. And I don't know about you, I don't like that. So this right here, this little semicolon keeps that what's called commented out, which means it doesn't really do anything. Now if you guys do not care about security and you're hosting this externally toward the internet, you can remove that semicolon like most other people and you don't have to worry about adding routes to anybody because they just need to add it for you. Anyways, that's what that is. Let me scroll down here. I go on my little rant here about why that's a problem. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some map statements. Okay? And these map statements are going to be... Uh, information you get from your friend. So we're going to go, where did I say in the blog? Let's see. For the example, right under broadcast nodes is where I've added them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste those three lines. And you can write these out of yourself. This is just an example. But I'm going to show you what all of this means. So right here I'm mapping three different call signs. All right. So this is probably I'm mapping a node because it's that dash seven. Uh, and this is the call sign of that node. Next, this is the host or the IP address. And I'm gonna I'm gonna change this because I'm gonna map it to myself, right? But let's say uh, I'm gonna map, map it to KN4MKB-7. And for the host, I already know my node's running in my network. It's at 10.10.20.81. .10 um, and that port is gonna be the same. And the B stands for broadcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all three of these with that node's IP. And instead of uh, dash, instead of K2FTS, which is a club call, I'm going to put in my call sign. Or I'm going to put in my other node's call sign with the SSID, right? So if, if you're Bill trying to connect to Jim's call sign, right? This would be Jim-7, Jim-11, Jim-12, depending on their application call signs. See this where it says KN4, KN4MKB-4 for my BBS, for my BBS, right? It says KN4MKB-5 for my chat. You see where I'm going? These are what the other person would add. Sorry if that's a little confusing. I should probably go back to the blog. But e either way, these are the nodes that I'm mapping to. Um, it is a single node, but it's running two different applications. It's running BBS and it's running chat. I know the BBS is dash 11, I know the chat is dash 12, and the node itself is dash 7. I know that it's running on 10.10.20.81. And I know that it's using port 10093. 
So that would be all of your friend's information or whoever you'd like to map to. So once you have that, uh, and remember, I'm over here at KN4MKB-4 for my BBS. I'm at dash 5 for my chat. And my actual, my actual node IP, or my node ID, is KN4MKB-3. So I have 3, 4, and 5 for this node. I'm going to go ahead and save that configuration file. Um, so next... What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start BBQ. So let's see. Let's go ahead and start BBQ32. And if you're running Linux or Windows, this isn't a guide on how to start BBQ32, right? And it started. So now I'm going to pretend that I'm the other guy, right? I'm the other guy adding me. So I'm going to remote into this other node, and I'm going to open up my bbq32.cfg. This is my map on the other node. And you're going to see I already have two sets of nodes linked. Okay? But now I'm going to add my Windows computer that I'm currently on. So I'm going to make three more map statements. And... What did we say our call sign was on this one? KN4MKB-3. And then dash 4 and dash 5, right? And for the host, we're actually using this Windows computer, right? So what's our IP address? 10.10.2.107. Okay, so instead of, you know, this this placeholder here, we're going to add the IP address of this Windows computer that's going to run BBQ. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So that should restart BBQ32. So ideally, both of them have been started with those new map statements that are both pointing at each other, right? And so next, we're going to take a look at that management interface and see if it worked. So I'm going to open up the management interface locally, right? This is the one running on this computer. And we're going to check out the interface also running on the remote one. And hopefully if I go to the nodes tab, or the links tab, so I had to actually refresh the page, but as you can see on my local node, here I have that far call and our call, and I have that node to node link. And hopefully if I refresh over here, as you can see, we have the same thing. It says uplink right now, but that will change to a node to node as soon as both of those broadcasts go together. So now we have that node to node connection. What does that really mean? Well, it means that we can actually, let's see, hopefully, can we get a new terminal window? It means we might be able to connect over to that other node from our local one. So let's try to say connect KN4MKB-7. And as you can see, well, barely, because it's very small, we were able to connect from KN4MKB-3 which is what this machine is, to the KN4MKB-7, which is what the remote uh, one is. Now I'm going to show you how to actually link the chat. So you'll notice on your node you should have this chat management. Uh, as long as you have it set up, you should be able to use that. Let's see. You should be able to see that and go to a configuration tab. Now if you would like to link your chat to someone else, you just need to uh, uh, put their, you need to put the pound sign in this block here, and then you put their node alias, right? Not their node call, colon, oh shoot. You put a colon, and then you put their chat application SSID. So my node call is KN4MKB-7, 
my chat call is KN4NKB-12. This node's chat call is K2FTS-12. And once both, uh, both sides have each other's pound sign, space, or, and then node call, colon, and then their chat call, right, for that application, what they will do is they're going to hit save, and they're also going to hit restart links. And once you do that, you should be able to go to status, and uh, you should see over here on the top right a link to the chat, which means that now, whenever any user joins the chat on either, in this case, in KN4MKB-12, or they join the chat on K2FTS-12, those users will be able to chat between each other. So that means that you have that node-to-node -node chat link, right? It's not too complicated. Um, it should it should kind of click at this point. Now you have that, and let's take a look again. Now you have that node-to-node -node link, and you also should have that node-to-node -node, uh, chat link. And so users should be able to transverse and say connect KN4MKB-whatever on the remote end and get back and forth and this all work over the internet. So if you guys run into any issues or if you have any issues with the video, make sure to let me know in the comments. This basically sums it up for the uh, BBQ or the BBS node part of the packet radio series, which is uh, kind of exciting. Uh, because now we are going to get into one of the most advanced topics in packet radio, and that is IP or TCP IP networking over packet radio. So we've been building on. I showed you guys the introduction to packet radio, and then we went on to APRS, and then we went on to BBS, and just like the flow, the, the chart I showed you guys, now we're going into that TCP IP which means we're going to be loading websites over packet radio. We'll probably, you might play a video games. We might, no, not quite sure where it's going to take us yet, but uh, just know that now BBS is over. You guys should know how to build your own nodes now. If you go back to those videos, you should know how to connect to your nodes and you should be able to interlink them together. So like I said, let me know if there's any issues and thank you for watching. 73 to you.